You have a business and you work very hard, but no matter how hard you try, you stay plateaued and leveled at the same level of revenue. You haven't experienced exponential growth and everything in your business requires you to run. It's frustrating because you haven't got time and energy to work on your business, you're stuck in it. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to escape this rat race of business that is freelancing essentially, where everything in your business runs through you. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through how I make $6 million a year or $500,000 per month with a four hour work week. Now that might sound too good to be true, but I swear on my life that is not hyperbolic it is the truth if i wanted to i could only work four hours a week and i'd still make five hundred thousand dollars a month to preface this video no you cannot build a company that makes 500 grand a month only working four hours a week. I worked 12 hours a day, 18 hours a day sometimes, six days a week for years on end to build this thing. But in the process, I've managed to remove myself. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through something, an idea that basically helped me do this. I'm gonna walk you through the four steps. There's four steps to this process. And if you follow these four steps with a resource that I've got for you, it becomes clear as day and exactly what you need to do to fire yourself from your business so that you can work on it, not in it, and have more time. You can start deleting your alarm clocks. You can start going to work whenever you want. You can decide that you can take the afternoon off in your business will still run. I'm going to walk you through how I did it. Let's get started. So what you can see on the screen here is my work week. Okay. So today is Wednesday. What you can see is basically what I've done this week so far. Now I've, I do more than this because I actually like to work. But the point I want to make here is I have the option to not work if I wanted to. So for my company to run, this is basically what my week looks like. In fact, if I go to next week, I can show you, right? So what you can see here, this is, this is next week. So I run a coaching call on Monday for my clients. I've got an interview with the client because he makes a bunch of money and I've got a call with Joel Kaplan, close friend of mine. I have nothing on Wednesday, I have nothing on Thursday. I'm actually flying to Dubai. If I wasn't flying to Dubai, I may have to do another coaching call on Friday and I do a weekly team roundup at 2 p.m. on Friday. And that is basically my week. I don't have meetings, I don't have much to do right now i still find things to do like create these youtube videos and build resources and help my clients because i'm conscientious and if i don't work i go insane quite frankly so i've got lots of stuff in the background but the point is is that outside of this company there's not much to do now this is my stripe okay because i want to prove to you that this is actually like this isn't some sort of bullshit right you can see my stripe here so this is today this is a real live stripe account without me editing the source code or anything what you can see is in the last seven days, we've made 80,000 pounds, which is about $100,000. The week before that, we made 94,000. So you can sort of see this is a real thing. Yesterday, we made $20,000, 20,000 pounds rather. We've got a payout of 175 grand on the way. And this is without me having to put huge amounts of work in. And I don't want this to come across as a flex. This isn't something that I'm trying to show you so I can get your approval. It's so that I can get your trust so that I can truly help you achieve something that you want to achieve. Because in order for you to believe what i'm saying you need to believe that i can actually help you okay so my name's charlie i've built and scaled two businesses an agency called norflow consulting to 100k a month and we signed over 350 clients and now i run imperium acquisition which is a consulting company we've signed over 600 clients we make 500 grand a month as you can see here this this is imperium agency imperium acquisition one of the businesses we run and um we, we make a good amount of money with very little input so how the hell do you achieve this? How do you get this result? Like I said at the beginning, this requires a lot of work. I'm in a position now where if I don't want to work, I don't have to. I still do. But you can't achieve that through four hours of work a week, right? You have to be willing to put two, three, four, five years of real heavy work into a business and then be intelligent with your time and energy in order to basically de decentralize it. So decentralization is a topic of today's video. Decentralization is the, the mental model that I have used to build this entity and to have this sort of cash machine running in the background whilst I essentially do nothing if I so wish, okay? So decentralization. So if you want this resource, it will be available in the description. I'm not gonna put it behind a paywall or I'm not gonna ask for your email or anything. I just want to help you. So business scale is about control and attention. A company is a living, breathing mechanism composed of different parts. Parts are pieces of the business that must function in order for the business to operate. So what you have to realize is you have to look at a business as separate pieces, like a puzzle, right? You've got pieces and you put them together and the whole thing is formed in all of its glory. So there's example parts for my business. So in order for my business to run and, and to operate, I need different parts. I need YouTube, organic YouTube. I need sales and conversions, right? I need coaching calls to run for my clients. I need a product to sell to my clients. I need accounting, I need bookkeeping, I need marketing, I need design, I need, you know, I need client success managers. 
when you look at your company, what you can start to do is you can start to see it for what it is, which is basically a collection of arbitrary entities that all must work in conjunction in order for the business to operate as a machine, okay? It's kind of like if you look at an engine or if you look at a car, it's like it's got different parts, you put the parts together and the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. So centralization is a term that refers to how much control and attention you as the business owner must exercise over or give these parts of your business for the mechanism to function smoothly. Decentralization, which is what we're trying to achieve, occurs when the founder or of the business releases control over an entity or part of their business or when it no longer requires their attention to run, right? So centralization can basically be explained by this diagram, okay? So if you see the first diagram, the core of the image is you, everything is connected to the founder, meaning constant control and attention is required to each part of the business. So this is what centralization looks like, right? And this is what most people's businesses look like if you if you metaphorically try to image the connections of the pieces, right? Where you're in the middle here and everything in your business, every part is connected to you. And connection is denoted by two things, control and attention. So if something requires your attention in order to run or to achieve or to, to, to work as a part, right, then it is centralized to you. And likewise, if it requires your control, if you control it, then it also is centralized to you. So let's say, for example, that you run a company, right? You run a business, you're making six figures or whatever. If you are in charge of keeping all of your expense receipts, for example, right, then expenses is centralized to you because you have to give it your attention because you have to upload the receipts and then on top of that you have to have control over it because if you're not controlling that thing giving it attention it's it stops failing and if you don't have your expense receipts then the government's going to come after you and then you're, you're going to fail and get all sorts of fines and your business will fail right likewise let's take another example let's go a bit further afield here and let's use the example of sales calls right so sales calls are an interesting one because where you are right now, maybe you need to take sales calls, right? Maybe in order for someone to become a customer, they require your attention and you have to have control over the process, right? It's pretty common. So that's centralization. What you're looking to achieve is decentralization, which it looks like over here. So the, the goal is to achieve the second di diagram where your involvement is minimalized. Okay, so decentralization essentially occurs when the business operates in a non-linear fashion, which means that it doesn't all come from one source, if that makes sense. So when you look at my business, for example, if you take my company, I'm still involved in the business, but I'm not, I'm, I sort of sit, it's kind of like, how could I draw this out for you? I can, I can give you an example here, right? So if we take this, right? And I'm sorry if you can hear someone cutting grass outside, I do apologize for that. But if you can visualize this for a second with me, right? So this is what a decentralized business looks like, right? This is what a centralized business looks like. When it's decentralized, basically what happens is you're still involved. What happens is you basically, the business operates around you, if that makes sense. So you are, you encompass the whole business and then you oversee the different parts, but it, it's, it's not connected to you, if that makes sense. So it can run without your control, without your attention essentially. And that's sort of what we're trying to achieve here, okay? So to give you some context, um, let's take my sales team, right? So my sales process in my business is decentralized, whereby instead of me having to manage all the sales calls, I have sales reps take the sales calls. But I don't have to manage all the sales reps because I have a sales manager, Jack. So I manage Jack, which means that in part, sales is centralized to me because I still have to oversee Jack and manage him and make sure he's doing everything fine. But he's talented and very clever. And what that means is my, I don't have to manage him in, in too much. Like with, with, I don't even, I, I, I never meet with him. He just sort of takes care of everything unless something goes wrong, which it rarely does. So sales is technically still connected to me, but what it means, right, is let's, let's sort of, let's map this out again, right? Because I really want to drill this metaphor home for you. So if we take sales, for example, right? So let's say that, you know, I'm here, right? And as the founder of the business, I have a constraint on time and energy. And so let's say that over here, we've got like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of sales calls or thousands of sales calls every single month that, you know, need to be booked. And let's just say that this, this big circle here represents hundreds of sales calls, right? Now, I haven't got the time and energy to be centralized and connected to these because there's no way that I can take thousands of sales calls, right? So what I then do instead is I hire sales people, right? Denoted by these little dots here, right? Maybe six of them. And then these guys are centralized to these calls. 
And what that means is their only role in the business is to handle these calls and give, all, give these calls all of their time and attention. So they take all their control, all their energy, and it's the only thing they do and they get very good at it. Now, once again, I could then be connected to all of these guys, right? But that means I'm still too centralized because I have to give you know six sales reps my attention. So what you do instead is you hire a sales manager who then is centralized to all of these, right? And then you connect yourself to the sales manager. So this is, this is basically, if you look at a successful company or a business that runs without the founder, this is how it works, right? I'm still centralized in one way or another to the sales process and the, and the operation of the conversion mechanism that drives money through the business and cash flow, but not much, right? So I've got one point, I've got one point of focus and Jack will tell me how everything's going and he's amazing and he manages all the reps which manage the sales calls. So it's very centralized and I don't, you know, I don't have to manage it. I don't have to hear it. They meet three times a week. We do a weekly team meeting and that's basically it. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. So let's keep going. So there's this thing called the founder's trap, right? So the thing is, is for your business to start, it has to start with centralization, right? That you have no choice in the first one, two, three years of business for your business to be centralized. By nature, you are the company, right? The businesses that grow, they basically, what would you, they are bigger than the founder. The biggest difference between a founder that gets stuck at a certain point, which is usually six or maybe multi six figures, and a founder that manages to get to seven or multi seven figures or eight figures, is the founder's ability to release control and to, to let go of needing to give everything attention. That is how you decentralize, right? So in the first two years of business, everything runs through the founder. However, the founder is a human being with two limiting factors, right? Time and energy. So time, we have 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? Energy is calorific potential converted into cognitive or physical outputs. So as the founder of a company, if you're hitting a bottleneck in your business and you can't grow beyond a certain point, it's because you've maxed out the output of the business because you've got a limited input. So the input of your business is your energy and your time. If you first principle out what a business is in the early stages, it's a system, right? And the input of that system is the founder's energy and the founder's time, right? And then the output is the money that the business makes. But the thing is, is there's only so much time and energy you have. These two things are very finite. And so the, in, the, the, the output in terms of the amount of money you can make is fundamentally restricted by the time and energy the founder has until the founder is willing to separate themselves, let go of control and release attention, right? So founders struggle with centralization because by the time they've dealt with all the parts, they have no time or energy left to focus on decentralization. So most founders are aware that this problem exists, but they're so exhausted and they're so burned out and they can't see the woods from the trees because they're so involved in the business that they can't decentralize. In other words, they get stuck in the business. So here's a four step workflow to decentralize your business. And if you're struggling to find the time and energy due to centralization, this basically should help you. This is the steps that I followed, okay? There are four very simple steps. If you do these and you follow them properly and you listen, then you shouldn't have a problem with centralization anymore, okay? So, four step workflow. So the first step is to simplify, right? So in order for your business to successfully decentralize, it needs to be simple, right? The, the simpler it is, the easier. Now I define simplicity by having the least amount of variables or moving parts possible. So you know earlier how we talked about parts, the less parts you have, the less things you need to manage, the less time and energy you need to give to the business, right? So most founders, they do three or four times more than they need to do. For example, let's say that you are like, one of the parts of your business, I need to create business cards, or I need to manage my Instagram stories, or I need to make sure I'm tweeting every day, right? Stuff like that doesn't really move the needle too much, so you don't need to do it, but let me explain. So make your business simple, remove variables, serve one niche and sell one thing. Less is more and long-term decentralization starts at the genesis of the business, right? So we have to build as we intend to finish, right? So complexity isn't a luxury that early founders can afford because they've only got a limited amount of time and energy. So I'll give you an example, Imperium acquisition, right? So we have one niche, which is high ticket agency owners, coaching consultants, right? You could say it's two niches, but it's the same problem, so it's fine. And then we have one service, which is easy grow, which solves client acquisition. So if you, if you want to simplify your business, which is the first step to decentralization, you need to understand the biggest points of leverage on niche and product. So niche and product are the two biggest leverage points for simplicity. So if you want to drastically simplify your business, 
so that it's easier to decentralize and deal with, it helps to have one niche and sell one product. That's the first lesson. And you might say to yourself, oh, but surely if I only have one niche, I restrict the market. And if I only have one product, I make less money. I make $500,000 a month selling one product to one type of person. And I'll make a million a month doing it, right? We're on the way to do that. So you need to break this paradigm that you need all these niches and that you need all these products because you don't. You just need to pick one person, find a really painful problem they have and solve it really well. One person, one problem, one solution, okay? So if you have two niches, you need to have two of every part. And if you have two products, you need to have two of every part, right? So you have to, you have to think about this, like niches and products are multipliers of business complexity. And so, you know, if, if by only having like one niche, I only have to have one of everything because I've only got one niche. So let me explain. More parts equals more management equals less time and energy. So because we have one niche and one product, we only need one sales script. We only need one traffic source. We only need one funnel. We only need one accounting strategy. We only need one client support method. We only need one brand, one pricing plan, one Stripe account, one type of sales training, one type of sales training onboarding, right? Everything in your business, you only want to have one of. Let me say that again. You only want to have one of everything in your business. One Facebook group, one method of support, right? You know, one type of client, one specific problem, one type of copy, one email list, one YouTube channel, one email newsletter, one podcast. Like when you have two niches, three niches, four niches, when you have six products, your business just, it's there's too much, man. Like there's leverage in simplicity and the best businesses that I've observed in this space, they focus on one niche and they sell one thing, maybe two. But I'm taking this to the knife's edge. I'm going to get to eight figures with one damn product <laughs> or die trying, right? So lose this idea that you need to have lots of things and just pick one. So is your business operating in more than one market with more than one product? If so, just have one. Remove the $47 ebook you sell. Get rid of the downsell. Remove the high ticket upsell. Don't have tears to your product. Pick one price. Have one sales script. Have one conversion mechanism. Have one discovery call process. Have one onboarding process, right? Have one service delivery method, have one platform, have one channel, have one mode of support. Like if you have multiple products and you sell multiple things, then you have two lots of service delivery to fold. And then you have two different problems to solve. And it, dude, you're, you, you only have so much time and energy in the day, right? So don't spread yourself thin, find the biggest leverage point, sell something high ticket, make something really good, and then sell it to one type of person. And just repeat that over and over again and remove this shiny object syndrome because I could release a 997 course and make an extra $50,000 a month like that, but there's not enough leverage in that for me, right? It's not worth it because it takes away the time and energy and attention that I can put into my main product, which is easy growth. So what you need to do is list your goal, right? So now think about your business and ask yourself how much money you want to be making per month or per year. You probably have the number in your mind. It's probably double, triple, quadruple, 10x what you have now. Write it down. Once you've written it down, you need to make a list of everything you need to do for your company to achieve its goal, right? So what I'm talking about here is I need you to make a list of everything that your company needs to have running. So all the parts, list them out, right? Everything. Every, everything down to like the, the smallest minute details of your company, list out. This is what I did, right? I looked at my business and I arbitrarily first principled everything in the company from accounting to marketing to sales to product to support to operations, everything, right? So if you're struggling to think this through, just think about the big aspects of your business like your team or your, the onboarding process you have. Think in macro systems first and then bring it all the way down to the smallest things. So once you've made that list, we need to eliminate. So the best strategy for the retention of your time and energy is elimination, okay? So once your business is simple, remove waste. So the first thing we need to do is make it simple. We need to have a simple lean mechanism that doesn't require more than one variable in any instance. Once you've achieved that, then you remove the waste. So you ask yourself what the goal is, and then you ask what you need as a minimum to achieve that goal, right? And then you remove everything that doesn't contribute to the goal from your list. So let me give you an example of this in real time because I've thought this through for my company. So my goal right now with my business 
is to achieve a million dollars per month with one product, right? So there's some requirements for this goal to happen. I need to generate a thousand appointments every month, right? I need to have the best product or solution. I need to have a good sales team, right? Anything that doesn't contribute to these three things is removed. Now, obviously there are other things. I need to have an operations manager. I need to make sure that support is happening. I need to make sure that the accounting is being taken care of. But if you, if you, what you'll find is really there's, you know, two, three or four objectives that if you just get those right, that's the main thing. We've all heard of the Pareto principle. You're not, this isn't your first rodeo, right? You've heard of the 20, the 80, 20 thing. You find the 20, you find the things, the 20% that give you the leverage of 80%. So you're looking for asymmetric returns, which means what if I focus on produces the biggest result, right? Because if I, I could focus on all sorts of shit, like making a special personal brand, or, you know, I could focus on redesigning my website and then doing 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 live streams and Twitter. I mean, I have one of those, but I don't even run it. But the main thing I realized is like, all I have to do is get a thousand appointments a month, have the best products and have a great team of people to sell it. If I nail those three things, then I will make a million dollars a month, right? Obviously I need to do some accounting and there needs to be support and there's some onboarding stuff, but that's it. I'll give you an example. We don't do onboarding calls for our clients right? Because they're not necessary. I realized this. I was like, okay, I've made my business simple. What's some waste I can eliminate? And I was like, onboarding calls. Because I found that with my onboarding calls for clients with the business, every I'd, I'd onboard a client and it would be the same call every time. It would be the same speech. It would be the same lecture or whatever you want to call it, where I just tell clients what to expect. And then I was like, well, why don't I just rewatch those calls, make a video that is a similar length and then just put it in the introduction of the program. And then that, that is decentralization in action. I have no, that means the onboarding calls no longer require my time and attention. So I don't have to do them. And you might then think, oh, but that reduces the client experience, but not really, because then they can watch the onboarding thing straight away. They don't have to wait for me. I'm going to tell them the same thing anyway. So it's logical, right? So you want to look for opportunities like that, where you can standardize and systemize and automate certain parts of your company like that. So I looked at the onboarding call. I was like, I'm spending what, like five, six, seven hours a, a week doing onboarding calls. I can just spend 45 minutes making one video, upload it. And then that saves me literally hundreds or not thousands of hours every single year, which are hours. It's not about the time. It's about the energy. It's about the cognition, right? That I can regain by doing that. Anything that doesn't contribute to the main things should be removed. So I'll make a list of everything that needs to be done for the company to fulfill its goal. So all I do with my day right now is make YouTube videos, manage my YouTube ads agency, who manages the ads for me, manage a setter, who manages more setters, manage a head rep, who manages more reps, create content for my program and find coaches for my program. Those are the main things that I focus on. And that's it. Now, there are other things that need to be done in the company, like accounting, payroll, etc. But those get managed by others. But I removed 80% of what everyone says you need to run a company, right? So everyone's like, oh, you need to have an ascension. You need to have a low ticket and then you need to have a mastermind. And then, you know, you also need to make sure you're doing live streams and posting on your Instagram story every day. Like you don't really need that stuff. I've got Instagram. I don't use it. The, the funny thing is I've got these social media channels like TikTok, like Instagram, like Twitter that my operations manager runs. Um, we were doing 250 grand a month before we introduced them. They haven't really done much for us. If I had to run them, I wouldn't run them. But the funny thing is I haven't logged into any of them once. So, so it, you don't need to give these things your attention, but they can still run is my point. So look at your list and ask yourself what you can remove. Find points of asymmetric leverage and focus on them. Automate. So step three is to automate. So after you've purged the list, ask yourself what can be automated and what can be run through a software, a zap or an app. For example, right? I was writing my YouTube descriptions, but I realized they could be done by chat GPT. Then I gave them to my operations manager. Expense receipts can be auto uploaded by an app. Sales call recordings can auto upload to Zoom, right? List potential automation ideas next to everything in the list. So an example of this is the onboarding call thing that I used to do, right? Where I was like, oh, I can just make like a video and automate it. And then clients can go through it with the, in two times speed with their own viewing pleasure and just crack on with it, right? So that's the third step. Now, last but not least is delegate. So let's recap here. So this, the first thing we do is simplify because we want to remove as many parts as possible. And the easiest way to do that is simplification. So once we've simplified, we eliminate, we get rid of waste and we look at things that we don't need to do, which you know what they are. You know, there's things in your business that you don't need to do. And then you eliminate them. Like an example of this is um, daily team standups, right? 
So a lot of people have recommended to me, like, oh, Charlie, you should meet with your team every day. Why? Oh, because you, you know, you, then you stay in touch with them and you, why? You know, I, I found for my team, we meet, well, the sales team meets on Mondays and Wednesdays without me. And then my business partner and I talk to the team on Friday. And we've tried the daily thing, but it just annoys everyone because <laughs> everyone just wants to get on with their own shit. You know, my, my philosophy for hiring people is to hire people that manage themselves. <laughs> you know, it, we don't do traditional sales management. We don't manage anyone. We just let them get on with their jobs and we trust them to do what needs to be done. And then we meet with them once a week to make sure that everything's happening as it should be. So that's something else that I removed that everyone said that you needed, right? So delegation. So now you're left with a task that, task that needs to be run by a human. So once you've, once you've simplified, eliminated and automated, you're left with things that require a human mind to run, right? So this is, the, this is where it gets interesting. The thing is, is the human does not have to be you. So just because the task needs to be run by a business, it doesn't mean it needs to be run by you. So the big mindset shift you need to make here is you run a business, you don't run your business. All right, so look at your company. Yes, it's yours, but you have to learn to build this discipline of seeing it as a company. That is a company. It's not my company, because if it's my company, then I have to do everything in it, right? It's a business that I run, but it's it's technically yours, it's your business. But if you keep referring it to it as, oh, that's my business, or this is my company, or oh, that's your company? Oh yeah, it's my company. Then you subconsciously tell yourself that you have to be doing everything. So when I look at my business, which is ironic because I've just called it my business, I don't see this you know, string of things that I have to do. I see an entity that I can build that runs without me. So just, just a piece of advice. So what you want to do at the beginning is isolate the really important tasks and these should not be outsourced. So what, what you're really trying to do here is eliminate everything in the list that you need to get, that you can get rid of and then you're going to look at the things that must be done. Like think the, the most important things that if they go wrong, the whole business falls apart. So examples for me, my YouTube channel, it's a massive driver of traffic for our sales team. My product, right? It's the most important thing in the business is making sure that we sell the best thing possible. Talking to my head of sales. If my sales team falls apart, then the business falls apart. And building funnels. If our funnels are bad, then we stop getting traffic, right? So... For me, these four things must be done, right? Like they, and they must be done with a level of perfection and skill and expertise that is unmatched, right? So I, I don't outsource these things. I don't outsource the ideation of my YouTube videos. I don't outsource the scripting of my YouTube videos. The only thing I do outsource is um, the, the editing, right? And then the descriptions and the uploading. I still do the titles. So I could outsource a lot of other YouTube stuff like ideation, scripting, but... I don't want to because it's a massive point of leverage. So I'm still centralized to these these four things you can see here, right? But it's good because they need to be done by me, right? For now. So tasks listed here need to be run by you. They are big tasks that really move the needle forward in the business. For you, it might be sales calls, producing ads, writing copy for clients, etc. So if you look at your, let's say that you do Facebook ads for your clients, right? And you're looking at your service delivery and you're asking yourself how you can decentralize. Try and isolate that the most important thing for your clients' results. Maybe it's the right, writing the copy and getting the creative right, right? You don't need to build the ads or manage the clients or do any of that crap. But the main thing, that the, the thing that really moves a needle by 80% in service delivery for you might be the creative of the ads and the copy of the ads. So maybe that's all you do for service delivery. You still handle that and then someone else does the rest. So what you will be left with is, ta is tasks that can be delegated by a human. Now, I'm going to walk you through how to create standard operating procedures here. This is going to hopefully blow your mind. But for these tasks to be successfully run, we require two things. We need a competent and conscientious human and a standard operating procedure for the human to follow. So an SOP is a standard operating procedure and this is how you delegate, right? This is probably the most important skill you can learn um, where you know how to do something, but every time you give it to someone else, they fuck it up. So what you want to do is you, you'll probably right now, you, you know how to do everything in your business, right? But the business isn't scaling because you can't give you can't produce more time and energy. You simply can't. It's just not possible because you're a human being, right? You're fundamentally finite and restricted by those things. So what you want to do is start developing standard operating procedures where you basically take a task or something in the business that you do every day or every week or every month, and you as you do the task, you make a Google Doc explaining how the task is done. That is as simple as that. Standard operating procedures, they sound complicated, they sound shiny, they sound wild, but literally all they are is instructions. 
if you're a chef and you work in the kitchen and you make some good food, then you write down the recipe and the instructions. It's no different in business, right? I promise you it's no different. You just, you list out the instructions. Everyone thinks that SOPs and automations and delegation is this weird wacky thing that only the select few can master. But I'm telling you now, it truly is very easy, right? So a standard operating procedure is basically a linear methodology for running a task. It is a series of steps and instructions that a human being can follow. And they're important to have because then when you have a human, they don't have to come to you asking what to do. You say, hey, this is the, this is the job I want you to do. Here's the standard operating procedure. Here's a video explaining how to do it. Off you go. Ask me any questions, but I'm not going to teach you. The document's going to teach you. You want to learn to replace yourself with Google Docs. So my company is basically a myriad of Google Docs and Google Sheets, essentially. So let me show you. So if you want to build an SOP, you need to do it in this order. So what you need is the core assets and templates, right? So things that people need, essentially. I'm going to give you some examples in a second because it will make it more concrete. You need to have core spreadsheets to manage metrics or tasks, the flow of the system, an overall daily workflow for the task, and a summary of all templates and spreadsheets needed, right? So let me give you some examples of standard operating procedures, right? So here we have an SOP hub specifically for my sales team, right? So these are all the SOPs that I have for sales because I wanted to I wanted to decentralize sales. I, I was like, I don't want to be involved in it, but I, but the, 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 the people that are doing it still need to make sure that, you know, they, they're doing it properly. So let me show you something here. So I'll give you, I'll, I'll show an actual example of this. So if I hop into Easy Grow, this is our product, by the way. If I go into the classroom and if I hop into sales systems and if I go to sales SOP hub, right? So here you can see this is all of our, our clients have full access to this SOP hub, by the way. We, we give them everything that works for us. All right, well, let's go with tracking sales, right? So here's a standard operating procedure for tracking sales. So what I basically did here is I put together a, a video walkthrough and then I basically provided the sales reps with a sales tracker, right? So this video basically walks them through how to use the tracker, right? You can sort of see it here. It's 22 minute long video. And then this, this thing here walks them through like how to use the spreadsheet. So that's just an example of a standard operating procedure, right? So if I give you another example, set a payout SOP, right? So another part of my business, um, let's come back here. Another part of my business is appointment setting and I need outbound setters to build appointments. And part of that is they need to get paid. And what I don't want at the end of every month is for my setters to be saying, oh, I've set this many appointments. Here are my bank details. I'll send you an invoice. Waste, right? That's a that's time and energy that could be going into the YouTube channel, the sales team or the product, right? So what I did is I put together a Google doc basically saying like, um, here's, here's your commission tracker, right? Here are the steps to fill it out. And then here's a video that explains how to do it. And then here, here are instructions on when we, when you'll get paid and when, when you, when your payments will get verified and everything, et cetera, et cetera. So what you'll see is like the reason that I only have to work four hours a week is because everything in the business that needs to be done has been explained in a Google doc with a video. And it took me a long, long time to create these, which is why you can't work four hours a week to build a four hour a week business, essentially. That's an example. I'll give you another example, right? So SOP hub for setters, right? So once again, this is inside of EasyGrow inside of our program. I won't go into it because it's sensitive, but um, you can sort of see what this looks like. Imperium setters SOP hub, right? So Facebook account configuration, LinkedIn account configuration, Facebook friends list building SOP, daily SOP for Facebook setting, LinkedIn SOP daily setting, set a commission tracking and payouts. So when I onboard a new appointment setter for outbound, I don't have to train them. I don't have to hop on a call. I just say, hey, here's a doc, off you go. And obviously like I'll maybe talk to them if they need help, but talented people prefer that because <laughs> they don't like waste. So, you know, you just give them one doc and they're off, right? Another example, daily SOP for Facebook, right? So what you can see here um, is when this is also an easy grow in our program, but I won't give it out on YouTube. But what you can see is my daily SOP for Facebook. So if a setter comes in and they start wondering, okay, well, Charlie, what do I do every day on Facebook? I'm not going to tell them. I just give them a doc. So I say, okay, well, here's the initial um, video that we send with the script, right? And then here's the video that we send once they reply positively. Here's how you can make sure you save that video so it's always there. So I used to do the setting for my business. I would spend hours every day on Facebook doing this setting and becoming really good at it. Here's the caveat. You cannot SOP something and hire for a role you do not know how to fulfill yourself. It's like people who want to outsource sales calls if they don't know how to sell. How are you going to manage someone and how are you going to teach someone to close if you don't know how to close yourself?
your business falls apart. Your incompetencies will be revealed at scale. And so you need to learn how to do everything yourself. You need to be in the trenches. I, I, di I did this you know, Facebook thing, but without the SOP, I built my own internal process for doing it for a year, 18 months. And then when it was time to you know, release the control and the attention to it, I put all of my knowledge and I critically thought through the process into a standard operating procedure. And then I just basically like gave it to someone. And I was like, go and do this. And now they book like eight appointments a day for us, which is cool. So some more examples. So Facebook account configuration, right? For set, I know this is sort of focused on acquisition. I've got I've got dozens of SAPs for all sorts of other stuff like operations, client management, support, etc. But the easiest examples are with this um, with with this stuff. So you know, here's an SOP for Facebook account configuration for my for my setters, right? Or here's an SOP for my sales call recordings for my um, for my sales reps. So oh Charlie, how do I do the how do I how do you want me to log sales call recordings? They don't have to ask you know if you think about it like sales call recordings they are a part of your business they have to happen for the business to run because they provide feedback right so they are a part they're a small part inside of a smaller part instead of a bigger part because you've got the sales system and then you've got conducting calls and then recordings is a tiny little part that comes down here but business success and business failure is determined by the death by a thousand cuts thing so if i have to manage the sales call recordings and tell people what to do all the time and constantly tell people what to do it only requires maybe like two minutes of my time every other day, whatever. But when you've got a hundred of these, it's death by a thousand cuts and you're spread in so many directions and you, you, you just can't do anything. You can't think because you've used all your time, energy and cognition on small little things that don't move the needle, right? So that's my philosophy for decentralization. Standard operating procedures take a while to build, but they will save you a significant amount of time and energy in the long term. So dude, I had to like spend like three months building all this stuff. And during that process, my business temporarily made less money because I had to stop doing certain things. But I knew that it's kind of like you go a step back to move like 10 steps forward, okay? So once you've created your SOPs, you want to make a video for each one explaining it. It will help whoever is running the tasks better understand what is required of them. The clearer the instructions, the better. So that's how I create standard operating procedures. Like I said, I've got dozens of them, probably like 50 or 60 for different parts of my business. And that's the point is if I don't have those SOPs, then I've got 50 different things that I need to manage in my head. So I want to, de the, the best way for decentralization is Google Docs, right? Is to find people that are talented and conscientious and to give them clear, straightforward instructions on tasks that can be predictably repeated, all right? And when you do that, you, you remove it, then, you, then you're, you're still centralized to the thing. So I'm still technically centralized to call recordings, but not really because I then, everything sales related goes through my sales manager and I'm connected to one thing as opposed to connected to like a hundred things, if that makes sense. So the main thing to take away from this video is this diagram. This is probably what your business looks like right now. And this is what you want your company to look like where it's a non-linear sort of web, right? As opposed to this sort of like everything's pointing to the middle and everything runs through you. Because let me tell you, man, like you haven't got a business if, and I mean this, I truly mean this, if you, if you fall ill and you have to go to hospital for two weeks and your business does not continue to grow and make money, then you don't have a business. That's the, that's the harsh truth of this. Is if, if, if that's the case, you don't have a business, you are a glorified freelancer. And I don't say that with any level of judgment or insult intended. I say it to make you realize that this is important, right? Because critically think it through. If something happened to you and you couldn't work for two weeks or three weeks, what would happen to your company? If the answer is, oh, it would probably, everything would grind to a halt, then you know you've got a massive centralization problem and that your attention should be turning towards decentralization so that you can ultimately grow the company. All right, so that's everything for this video. I hope you found it useful. As I said, this will be available in the resources section below. Um, also, I've got a little plug down here. Um, if you want more clients and you're struggling to acquire clients, and you basically want to shortcut the decentralization process of your current acquisition, we've done that for 600 people. Um, like, I mean, you've sort, I, I sort of showed you there, but if you want all of our standard operating procedures, all of our processes for client acquisition that we've used to book thousands of appointments every month and fill up five, six sales reps calendars, if you click here, it'll take you to a funnel. There's a video of me explaining how we can help you. It's a sales funnel. It's designed to sell you something. It's designed to get you to book a call. I'm, I don't want to pretend that I'm, I, my, my, basically my intentions are transparent. I want you to buy something from me, right? And that's why I make these YouTube videos, but it's also so I truly can just help you. Um, so if you don't want to click this and you don't want more clients, that's totally fine. Don't click it. 
Just take this knowledge, implement it in your business and just be more successful. That's all I ask. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Like it if you liked it. Because if you liked it, it really helps me. Like it makes me happy. Subscribe, it would make my day and comment anything below. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day.